Winning Tennis. All right. I want to take a look at the Roger Federer forehand in slow motion. This is going to give us a good analysis of what you need to do. I'm going to touch on the key concepts. Let's play it. And he does a split step. Let's just take that back a little bit. All right. So he split steps and he gets his weight. Notice right there he's putting his weight onto his right foot. Racket is back. Left hand is up. Racket is taken back. He's putting his weight onto the right foot. All right, play it. Notice this position of the racket right here. So what he's doing is bringing the racket forward and it's creating almost a 90 degree angle with the arm. A lot of club players do not get that angle. His left hand was out, starting to retract. And here you can see the 90 degree angle. Okay, that's called the wrist lag. And you can see the butt cap is actually facing the ball. There's so many things on the forehand to talk about, but this 90 degree position is extremely important. I see a lot of club players that do not have it and they're lacking power and spin in their game because of it. So if you take away one thing from this video when you're a club player and you're like a 3-0, 3-5, even a 4-0, 4-5, if you're not achieving this position, you're probably not maximizing your forehand. Notice his arm is straight. There are two different ways to the forehand. Djokovic has a little bit more of a bent arm. Federer keeps his arm straighter. I like to keep my arm straight like Federer as well. Now he makes contact. Look at the angle of the face, right? It's about 10, maybe 10, 12, 15 degrees facing down. Let's play that back again. Let me see if we can put this in more slow motion. Let's put it down here. Okay, let's play it. Okay, so still looks like the butt cap is going to be hitting the ball. It looks like he's bringing the butt cap right to the ball. He's got the wrist lag. His eyes are right on the ball, right? Pressure on that right foot. That's the rear foot, but in the he's in an open stance. But that's still the, the uh, foot that you want to put your pressure on. Bam. Now, he, as he makes contact, he... Notice he brushes slightly up. The top part of the racket comes up. Now this is a key key part of the forehand that I talk with about my students. Notice the racket. Here he was going for a little bit more spin, so his arm is a little bit more bent. But if he was driving that ball, his arm would be extended out towards the target and his arm would be straighter. So on the forehand, there's just a lot of variations. Do you want to put spin? Are you looking to lob it? Are you looking to drive it? And how hard? Okay, he's still looking at the ball at this point. Now watch his feet. You see his pressure on the right foot here. And he should be transferring it over to the left foot soon. And yes, he's starting to transfer that weight. And you can see that racket comes all the way back. And now you can see he's starting to transfer that weight to the left side because you can see his leg is bent. And now his heel will touch the ground. And look at that racket. That racket is all the way on the other side of his body. Okay, notice how he holds the racket, right? He's in the ready position. He's got his dominant hand on the bottom of the racket and he holds it at the throat. Personally, when I play, because I have a two-hander, I have both my hands here on the racket. But if you're a one-hander, you're definitely going to have your hand on the throat. Okay. When the ball is struck, now he's getting into his split step. He's anticipating the ball. First thing first, right? So now he's pivoted onto the right foot. Notice he's shifting his to the forehand grip. He uses the eastern forehand. And watch what's happening. He starts making a unit turn. Notice where the racket is. Notice his position on the hands. I want you guys to start doing this. When you make your unit turn, keep that left hand on the racket. Do not take the hand off the racket. Turn it with it. That helps create a great unit turn. Otherwise, you could just end up bringing the racket back and not turning your shoulders. Again, he is putting pressure 
Look at that. He's on one leg. He's on his right leg. That's how much he's putting emphasis he's putting on his right leg. Now, here we can see the racket is about head height. Notice his elbow is away from the body. I see a lot of club players having their elbow right up on their body, and that takes away because when you don't have space between your elbow and your body, then your racket doesn't have the room to move through, and you're losing the momentum you could otherwise have. Let's continue. Okay, once he achieves the full unit turn, notice now he's raising the racket, still up a head level. <clears throat> so once he's made that full unit turn, his shoulders are straight on to the ball. So his core is actually about a 40, maybe I would say almost a 90 degree angle to the net, almost perpendicular to the net. His hips, generally his hips are going to be going this way and notice his shoulders are this way. Okay, that torque will allow him to untorque into the ball. Okay, also look at the angle of the racket. The angle is coming this way. Well, I see a lot of people holding the racket this way. Correct way is this. You want the head to be facing closer to the, to the net than your hand, or your, than the handle. Now he just, just completed his unit turn, so he's going to take his left hand off the racket and he's going to straighten it out. Okay, so right here, he's got his left arm almost straight across. He's going to transfer the weight onto the right foot. And notice the distance here with the elbow. Now, what a lot of the pros do is different from the women on the WTA side is notice what he does with the racket. The strings are pointing straight down to the ground. Right there. I see a ton of club players not doing that. Now this is also called uh, pat the dog, and I'll show you why. Because once it's once you get to that position right here, where you lower the racket, so when he took the racket back, it was up high, and then he lowers it. Okay, that's that's a key signature move of the pros: bring the racket up high and then lower it. I see a lot of club players just bringing the racket low. <clears throat> and that'll work on low shots, but when you have to hit shot, high shots, that doesn't work. And I want to make a whole video just focusing on hitting high shots because that's a big point of, uh, uh, it's a big challenge actually for a lot of club players. So eyes on the ball, his strings are still pointed down in the path to dog position. Now comes the wrist lag. As he starts bringing the racket back, his hand is so loose that the racket will snap back in his wrist. Almost like a slingshot effect. Look at that. Makes contact almost right in the middle of the strings. That's another thing that club players can work on. They don't make contact in the middle of the strings enough. Now he makes contact also out in front of his body. Still having the weight on the right leg, he will eventually transfer it to the left. Okay, so in this one, put slightly less spin. And it almost looks like he's going to catch the racket. A lot of uh, young players have, a, have problems following through, so their coaches tell them to catch the racket to ensure that they bring it all the way across. And it looks like he's almost catching this racket here. He does, yeah. And look how far he finishes. So now his shoulders were this side, now they're this side. And he's got his weight transferred to his left leg. And, and typically I see a lot of club players also not squaring up, not getting back into the ready position. He's taking a little hop. Now this is going to be a split step. He's putting weight evenly on both feet. He's going to bend his knees a little bit, waiting for the next shot. Now he already has addressed it as a forehand, and again, he's I'm just going to let it play. He has the racket up. He has the left hand come out, as we talked about. The racket's kind of facing this way. He's going to bring the racket down into the path the dog position. I think Rick Macy coined that. And then there's the wrist lag. And this ball was a little close to him, so he he had to kind of move a little bit to give himself the distance to hit the ball. And here you can see he's finishing just under the shoulder. Right? Beautiful forehand. 
Let's take a look at that from one other angle. All right, here we see it from the left side angle. And he's doing the same things from a different angle. Here we can see a few things better. Notice he's bringing the racket back up high. And look how high that racket is. And what I talked about before with the head of the racket being closer to the net than the hands, you can see that. Right? His hand is here. The racket head is here. So that racket head is kind of facing on a, on a slant. I would say it's about maybe a 55 60 degree angle here right if this was flat and this is 90 and this is about 45 right so maybe about 55 that's really important that's a bit that's a key I see a lot of players not u utilizing that now I love this angle because you could see the distance from his elbow to his body and I see a lot of players that don't hit a good forehand they're they're um, elbows are right next to their body and that's kind of a common thing um, you know when I teach children sometimes I'll just show them and I'll see how they set up and they they kind of naturally put their elbows near their body I think it's because it just feels more comfortable to have your elbow resting on your body but that's not the correct way to do it you definitely want that distance Okay, so here again, he has the left hand straight across. You could you could see here really see how his shoulders, his upper body is facing the side here, right? So when we hit the ball, we are going to be pretty much perpendicular. Our shoulders are going to be perpendicular to the ball, even a little bit more than perpendicular, maybe like a hundred degree angle. Now, in the back, we can see here how he. He started to put the ball down. Now the ball's a little higher. If the ball was lower, he would have lowered that racket a little bit more. But he just needs to bring the racket just slightly under the ball. He doesn't want to bring it too much. And you can see that's a nice swing path. He, he, he brought the racket back up high originally. He came down about right here. Now he's swinging up to contact. Look where the racket is in the ball. He's going to actually swing up. Why? He wants to create topspin. Very nice. Now, now here you can see the wrist release. He ha Let's just go back a little bit so you can see that he has that 90 degree angle on the racket. Here is where the wrist lag happens. You can't really see it, but there is a 90 degree. If you kind of draw the arm like this and see the racket, that's a 90 degree angle. And that'll be releasing into the ball right there. He's starting to release it. And now, Let's see if we can get this going. Right, it's on the slow speed. Let's see what happens. Yeah. You see that angle being released? That was a 90 degree angle, which was right here. So that racket, if he would have held that 90 degrees, it would have been straight up. And now he's releasing it. Guys, I'm giving you so many points. But <laughs> if you want to know everything that's happening in the forehand, I'm telling you in this video. Um... Concentrate on just a few of them, maybe one or two, but this is really important. I see a lot of players not doing this too. Well, first off, they're not getting in the 90 degrees, but even if they get in the 90 degrees, they're releasing too soon or too late. This is what you want to do. As soon as you make contact with the ball, you let that release go and watch what happens right there. So his arm comes out pretty straight, still has a, a little bit of a bend. It really depends on what he wants to do with the ball. And you can see the arm is out and the, and the racket is facing the target. And now he's going to come around. You see how he comes with the racket? You see it looks like a pancake. You can't even see the strings. Okay, and look where he finishes here. The butt cap is almost face. If he would have continued, the butt cap would be facing us. Split step. Right there, right. Sorry, sorry, he's bouncing, got into a split step. Racket comes back high, left hand comes out, pressure on the right foot. Once you once any player comes off comes on the heel, as he does here, the pressure has to be on the other foot. That's how you know. That's when I look at my students, I can tell if they're transferring their weight properly. He brings the racket back, he makes contact, and let's see what happens. Yeah, his arm almost straight. And he's going to come around. 
I like the follow through. But also, one the thing I want to point out: a lot of people, when they follow through, they kind of have trouble with the left arm. The left arm simply retracts. You're simply gonna, it's gonna be left. It's gonna be straight out, and then it just bends and retracts. That's all it is. You can catch the racket too if you'd like. I don't catch the racket. I just do what Federer does. I just retract and I come over the shoulder or the arm. So here, what a lot of players don't do, they're not bouncing, right? Then that kind of look like a Bruce Lee like bouncing around, right? Just like any great athlete would bounce around, split step, goes into his motion, shoulders are turned. So his hips are going this way, his shoulders are going that way. Again, the racket is heading, facing more towards the net on that angle. 55 degree angle. He sets the racket back, elbow away from the body, wrist lag, make contact out in front, swing low to high, come through. Notice where the, the hand is up by the shoulder, but the racket is dropped down under the shoulder and over the arm. And only now he starts looking front back right back in the ready position i see a lot of players this is becoming a long video i'm going to stop it soon but basically um i see a lot of players not getting right back into the ready position he's naturally right back in the ready position bouncing again and waiting for the next shot and it's the same thing over and over a million zillion times there's not really any deviation right he brings the left hand out transfers his weight gets the racket up almost creates like a c shape Racket. Now here's a low, I can tell there's going to be a lower ball because he's setting the racket a lot lower, right? Now here's our big dog sitting right here, and this is the pat the dog position. Yeah, you see there's a lower ball, obviously, right? So when you bring the racket back high, if you have a high shot, you keep the racket there. If it's a medium shot, you're going to set it here. If it's a low shot, you're going to set it here. That's it. Easy, right? So why aren't you doing it? Why aren't you hitting like Federer? For a lot of you, it also could be if you even if you have right technique, that you're a little tight. You know, you're tensing your muscles up. You're trying to muscle the ball. You're not whipping the ball. Hey, if you want to, you know, if you want to send a video of yourself hitting your forehand, I'll be glad to critique it for you, free of charge. And I also love to uh, do it in a video on the channel so others can learn from it. If you want to send that to me, uh, just leave something in the comment and I'll give you my email address. Bam, out in front. Hey, I hope you liked this video. I hope you found it useful. Try some of these things and subscribe to the channel for more videos. I'll be coming out with more videos soon. Like, share it, and if you've watched this far, I applaud you.